Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's the Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and today we're talking about a holiday tradition that might surprise you. Joining us today are our regulars. We'll be talking about our own traditions, including the tradition to stack Benjamins every year. Joining us is a man who doesn't even know what day it is because he's retired. From LenPenzo.com, it's father time. (laughs) Nah, it's just his older brother, Len Penzo. We also welcome a man who has the annual tradition of smiling once. Oh, gee. And then a woman who bucks tradition, including the tradition of spending only the money you have in your bank account, Paulette Perhatch. But that's not all. Later, I'll swoop in with my traditional trivia question. And now, a guy who's here for you year after year, it's Joe Saul Hi. Hey there, stackers, and happy Friday to you. I'm super excited to be talking traditions today and uh, as is tradition we are hoping to kick off a fantastic weekend with you and let's start off by meeting our team here together for the first time in our entirety in 2023 we'll start off with a guy across the card table whose name might rhyme with get off my lawn it's mr og how are you man i don't worry about people coming on my lawn i've got the big fence around it it's a board on board cedar eight feet tall the the wiring across the top (laughs) yeah squirrels don't even bother running on my fence absolutely and that voice you just heard briefly there the woman who when asked cash or charge said please charge it to somebody else's account it's paula perhatch how are you I'm good, especially when I'm going out to dinner with you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Charge it to him. That was a fun dinner, by the way. That was a that was great a super dinner. Fun dinner. Totally yeah, worth do- it. Whatever bill <laughs> you got. <laughs> Got to do that again. And the guy who, when dreaming, instead of counting sheep, he counts bars of gold bullion. It's uh, <laughs> Mr. Len Penzo. How are you, buddy? I'm good. But, you know, I always feel jealous of... Uh people who always try to start at the new year on the right foot because i never ever can i am I'm, like, I'm like destined to never be able to you know why that is because you're left-footed inertia that's i have two i have two left feet that's correct <laughs> i feel so good i got to the joke you got that one. i got you it got that one. is that a great way to start the year now if i could take part in our trivia challenge halfway through this i'd be pretty well off Hey, today we're going to be talking about traditions. There's a piece uh, that I read this last week at CNN.com, which is about KFC and Christmas. Big Christmas tradition, uh, Mr. Penzo, in Japan is eating at KFC. Is that the same tradition you have in the Len Penzo household? (laughs) Every Christmas get some extra crispy? No, at the Penzo household, uh, no, KFC at Christmas is not. Uh, we tend to, we do uh, the beef brisket on Christmas Eve and we do the, oh. uh, we call, we call, uh, 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 we call it Chickadell, but it's really Cavadell. Uh, it's Italian pasta. I make homemade. We do that on Christmas Day. But let me say this. I love KFC and every day, every chance I can have KFC, it's Christmas Day when I do get to have KFC. It feels like another Christmas day. It does feel like Christmas day. I love KFC. My daughter lived in Japan for a few years and said that it was just packed. Christmas day at KFC was just packed. But you know what? It's gotten to the point in Japan that they don't even think about it. What traditions do we have that we don't even think about? You guys have been nice enough to create some list for us. We're gonna walk through some of our money spending traditions. What are some things we just Blow us some cash. Don't think about it. We got Paulette here. We got OG here. We got Len. We got Doug. So let's move. All right. You know, this uh, KFC thing, guys, uh, a tradition in in Japan. What are some traditions at your house where you maybe spend some money and don't really think about it? Paulette, what's a money spending tradition? Let's kick off this discussion that you uh, put on your list. Okay, so my this is my favorite one. Um, whenever we have like a, a big, big win, every two to three years, like big new job, something amazing happens, we go to Ruth's Chris, which is just an amazing oh, steakhouse. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Len, you're mm-hmm. nodding your head. Are you a Ruth's Chris fan? Yeah, I uh, I love Ruth's Chris, especially because uh, they'll they'll let me get KFC when I'm there. Sometimes they, they actually will. <laughs> 
I can order that and they, they'll just run outside around the corner. Yeah. Perfect. I've, and I've then they'll charge you these for a hundred bucks. Yeah. I just, I have some in my purse. I like to do the, I stack a little bit of the chicken on top of the steak and just do it that way. Um, <laughs> I've only been kicked out once, but uh, yeah, that's really my favorite. That is, so, you know, I mean, where did the Ruth Chris come from, by the way? Why Ruth Chris? It's my sister. I don't know. That's her. My sister. So my sister works in high level security. And so she gets exposed to a lot of the things that people who can afford high level security uh, have. So she's the one who reports back <laughs> about the nice things. So that was her. Um, that was her idea and she kind of started it and she will kind of take me out when I had the whole F off fund thing happen. Um, gosh, six years ago, she like took me out to celebrate, which is just amazing and, and really nice. And I think celebrating that way, especially wins that are surprises, like cements the joy and the feeling that like things are going well. I think that celebrating is really important and we kind of undervalue the importance of that. But what's amazing is, is how, you know, it became Ruth's Chris instead of just celebrating at, I mean, case in point, KFC or whatever it might be. Oh, mm -hmm. gee, do you have a place that you go specifically that's your celebration place like Paulette has? No, no, we um, do something a little similar when it comes to birthdays, um, you know, like kind of our, 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 you know, whoever's birthday it is, they get to pick. There's really no no limit to it although i did try to get alinea for my birthday and i was oh, probably yeah. shot down which was <laughs> bs because it was my birthday and i was paying what's so, alinea oh it's a uh, phenomenal it's a little, restaurant in chicago restaurant in chicago mm, my yeah and um and they had they had t reservations available and we could have just you know jumped jumped on the plane and gone i mean it was like like let's go and uh, oh i was pr i was told no Wow. So, but everybody else gets to go out to eat on their birthday. So that's cool. There's a tradition. I just jump in the plane and head to Chicago. <laughs> in the plane. Yeah, in I have a plane, new tradition. It's called, I leave my family to go do whatever the hell I want. That's what I would have. <laughs> I have that on my list, actually. That one's on my list, too. So. is that, Well, before we get to that, Len, do you have a specific place that's your celebration place like Paula yeah, has? Absolutely. Benihana. I think I've mentioned oh, that yeah. here many times. I right. love Benihana. And, uh, and to the owners there, whoever's running that company, I'm happy to uh, uh, sponsor you guys if you so wish. So, I, I mean, I can't say enough good things about Benihana. You just like it when they do the choo-choo with the onions, don't you? <laughs> You know what? I, I, I've always said I'm a, I'm a comics uh, uh, best audience and I'm the Benihana chef's best audience. I laugh and I and I have a good time. I, every time it's like the first time they've done it when I see that that trick, you know, it's like the same trick. I know all the tricks, you know, they only have a handful, but they do, you know. Yes. It, but, those, but shrimp tails, those shrimp tails go into their pocket and you start cracking up like you've never seen it before. Or yeah, or they make the rice, the heart beat, and, you know, and they say, you know, they put the spatula under the, under the rice in the form of a heart and they make it beat. Oh yeah. That's like, I just look at them every time and say, gosh, that's so clever. You guys, good job. I can see all the chefs and they go back to the back room. Man, I had this guy. You should have seen him. <laughs> it's just eating out of my hand. Pins oh, and you needles. Do the shrimp thing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, oh, gee. Okay. So, so my, uh, my other one uh, or another one that I have on my list is, uh, Paula, you kind of gave it away. Like, just go somewhere by yourself. Uh, although this year I didn't do it. Also around Christmas. Um, I, I, um, I, I like to have a couple of fingers of scotch and go sit outside by the fire by myself and like do my my best Christmas Nick Offerman impre impersonation. If you haven't seen that on YouTube, where he just has a YouTube of 45 minutes of him sitting in a chair, drinking scotch, staring at the camera, just sitting there with the fire in the background. Just, you know, leave me alone. Give me a moment. I need a moment. However long this uh, glass lasts. So... I started to turn last year. Uh, I thought going to uh, Disney by myself would be this tradition because I like Disney. I like going there by myself. I went twice last year, and the second time I was so bored. I was so bored. But your it was, family uh, loved it. Len, what's on your list then? Let's, let's take the next tradition on your list. Um, you know, it's turned into... 
I, I mean, this is a tradition uh, on New Year's. Um, I, we, we always host uh, a little New Year's party here and I get the prime, I get a prime rib, a real prime rib. Mm. And that has turned into a, you know, that's, that's a, it's been a very fun and enjoyable uh, tradition. And one of the things I like to do is every year I kind of change the way I cook that prime rib. I'm trying to perfect the, the way to get that thing cooked absolutely perfectly. So that's kind of a fun thing for me to do. We'll have to compare notes, Len, because uh, that's our Christmas uh, day dinner is uh, is prime rib. So oh, d- I think, well, I, you, I, think you, I got a licked. Do you? Ex- oh, do you? Okay. Well, I've I've tried lots of different ways. I tried a new one this year too, and it's uh, it's 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 kind of fun. I just love seeing how they come out every year. It's kind of hard to ruin. Yeah, them, include but... me on that email. Okay. Surprise meat. <laughs> I wrote down some traditions that um, that that I've seen a lot around me lately. Like I have we have friends that decorate, do a ton of decorating, ton of decorating for every holiday, like redo the entire house for Valentine's Day. We go over to their house and it's going to be all Valentine's. And then that all comes down and it's all St. Patrick's. And then that all comes down and it's all all, uh, you know, the next thing and the next one. And I just think how much time. Do we spend uh, we spend changing up all these decorations? I mean, the amount of money we spend on decorating and redecorating the house. Uh, Paulette, you lean that far into the holidays? No, God, I actually it's really funny. And then the novel I work on, one of the families does that. And so the mom has like a spatula. that's like a Easter egg. Um, but that's like if that's like your thing, that's great. But it is like you've got to have a lot of storage. And I when you think about like fast fashion, I think about like fast holiday decorating, as long as you're not throwing all that stuff away, if you have the storage, I think that's fine. But if you buy it and then you just donate it every year. Um, but yeah, I mean, people can have their things and I love, I love seeing people's, you know, holiday decorations, at least like usually Christmas decorations, um, outside. But yeah, I mean, if that's your thing, go for it. But I certainly well, do not. Yeah. Well, and on that note, I was thinking about just the idea of, of, um, God, Len, is was this true in your family too? Let's have an old guy moment. <laughs> when <laughs> I just remember growing up, and I I would help my mom do the Christmas cards, like you know, mm-hmm. the, the, just not even just Christmas cards. Let's talk about just greeting cards in general, right? Just the amount of money that people used to spend anyway on greeting cards, and and the oldest members of my family still send me greeting cards. You get many? Do you get many cards in the mail? Yep, we. St- we still do it. Uh, the honeybee sends them out every year. Um, I, I noticed over the years, they, the numbers have dwindled, uh, you know, not to, uh, it's probably 30% of what we originally got 20 years ago. Um, and I think that's because they're so expensive and it is a lot of time. And, you know, you got the stamps, you got the cards. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's something we still do. And then the cards we get, we put them proudly, put them up on uh, one of, uh, in our oh, do you? game room. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 We'll show them yeah, yeah. all for the holidays. Yeah. Everybody's cards. Look at how many friends I have. Home. Yes. Well, <laughs> not as many as, not as many as I used to. <laughs> well, I'm actually glad to hear you say that Len, because, uh, we were just talking about that wondering, we either fell out of favor with an awful lot of people or not as many people are sending cards anymore. Yeah, I think uh, it's the because, latter, Doug. It's the latter. Yeah, I hope it's the latter. Otherwise, I'm not nearly as likable as I thought I was. Well, Paula, you were saying you like the greeting card thing. Yeah, I love it. And I actually I love Postable, which does like handwritten cards, you know, like computer handwritten is like a handwritten font. And just for me, I think it's an ADHD thing. where like mailing something. It's like, forget about it. So many moving pieces. Like I cannot do it. So with postable, I know and I swear they don't pay me, but like, I really do love it. Um, you just go online and I could type everyone their own card and include a picture and put it on there. I didn't get to it this year. And it was, it actually prompted me to go to my calendar next year. And every Saturday in December schedule two hours to do something around the holidays. Cause it's like, it is, I saw one post by someone who um, doesn't celebrate Christmas and was from a different country and came and and they were shocked and they were like, it is just like a part-time job that everyone has during December. That's what Christmas is in the U.S. because there's so much work around it to do, Mm -hmm. which is a good, it can be joyful and I think it's great, but like, you know, um, you have to schedule it in and I was just super busy. 
I wrote down one more tradition that uh, just trying to think kind of deeply about this. And this one, this one's going to go way back. I mean, this is just a something that's so innate that we don't even think about anymore. Just the idea of having a yard. Mm. Like just, just the idea of, hey, I have landscaped the area in front of my abode. And uh, this is all this is all now belongs to me. Like, like, where does the idea that we need a fully landscape yard and spend a ton of money? Where does that come from, OG? A homeowners association back in the 1700s. <laughs> He's I apparently no our historian. I no. heard. OK, this is definitely like I just a, I don't know if this is true, but I heard it came from England where the rich people were just showing off that they could grow inedible grasses, that they had so much land that they didn't need to use their land for crops. So they would grow inedible grasses on it. Could be completely. No, I've, heard, I've heard something similar, Paulette. I think along those yeah. lines. Yeah. Well, then I trust Doug, but I have a friend who started a company doing, um, he helps people do edible landscapes in St. Louis and his yard is awesome and amazing. And I always think about if I, if I bought the house that I'm in right now, how much I would like love to just have him come down for a week and help me plan out how to make my yard into like a beautiful. So it's like one giant gummy bear. It's it is Willy Wonka. It's Mother Nature Willy Wonka style. It's amazing. I'd so love to drive through. Edibles. All I'm thinking. <laughs> I would love to drive through OG's neighborhood and I see the OG family all grazing in the front yard. But I mean, it's it's ridiculous that it's it's silly to have food growing in your yard. Like to us, we're like, ha, oh, wouldn't that be crazy? And it just shows It'd like how great. like yes, uh, this is, like we're so disconnected from nature and our food. So yeah, I'm just all about we it. just yeah, we started growing some uh, rosemary. Didn't start mint because you know when you start mint, your whole yard is just mint. Everything oh, mint really? grows like a weed. Yeah, but uh, rosemary and and some basil last year. Mm. Joe, there's a tradition that you haven't asked me about that you were a part of for about, for, gosh, between 10 and 15 years. I think you sent out think, uh, holiday CDs. Yeah, that was an enormous amount of effort and a pretty significant cost and probably took me better part of six weeks. I put together a CD of holiday songs that were not this. I mean, there were always some of the standards that, you know, we've all heard. But then I tried to really get far afield and get into a lot of unusual ones and, you know, custom made the covers and family pictures on it and a note from the family and all of that. And um, now both of like the Finn turn, especially uh, hates Christmas music because they grew up having to listen to it for all of November as I was screening the songs I was going to have, uh, you know, on the way to school and back. They were just forced to listen to versions you of wrecked CD. It. You wrecked Christmas. I absolutely ruined Christmas for them. Oh. But, uh, I, you know, I never really added it up on purpose, but it was several hundred dollars if not more than that between much you know, more than just sending the CDs. greeting card we were talking about earlier yeah the labels i had a label press that would put the custom labels on the cds the jewel cases because i was mailing them out in jewel cases and then i had to buy the special padded shippers and then the cost you know was for shipping every one of them was a couple of bucks so it was spendy and uh Never got quite got the ROI. I thought people would just start mailing cash back to me as a thank you. <laughs> well, maybe not, but I was effusive, and I was always surprised when you're like, dude, you're one of the few people that even mentioned you yeah. got it. Yes. Yes. You I look were. forward to it every year. I had that CD I think changer. Cheryl liked it more. Len had one of these CD changers. I would fill up my CD changer with a bunch of Doug's albums, uh, his his CDs, and uh, play that in the CD changer back in the back in the day, before those went went bye bye. How, hey, how many how have, many did how many did you have? How big was your CD changer? A uh, hundred. I went for the big one. The hundred. Oh no CD no changer. I no I went for the, I had the four hundred. The oh, four hundred. Shut up! I am not kidding you. Yeah, and it was it sad when that went bye bye. Yeah, it went yeah. bye bye. For me, it went bye bye like six months after I got it. The iPod came out, which totally made my <laughs> four hundred. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Same. Hey, do you guys got a couple more of these ideas that maybe we've rethought recently, like greeting cards, yards, the those Amazon type thing. 
the Amazon me. list. Yeah. At that's first it. I was like, you guys, this is, what is this? Like mail order your presence. This is so depressing. And I hated it. And then I liked everything I got for Christmas. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that's not bad. This is good. Hey, this is good. And I'm going to become a fan. You know, it is like, I love, I, we definitely try to have a mix of like things that, oh, I saw this and I thought of you. But then also it's just like, it's just good information to be like, this is actually something that this person wants and I can get it for them. You know, it is, I think it's like a little bit less wasteful, you know, because sometimes you just end up donating or re-gifting a lot of things. So I became a fan of the list, you know, that or like a Pinterest board or something if you want to support. Yeah. I also have like a, a Pinterest board of like indie um, companies and shops that I like to support. So I do a balance. I do shop at Amazon. I'm not super proud of it. Um, but then also try to support the local shops too. Let's put a couple more on here because after the break, I want to talk about these lists. Cause I definitely have some thoughts about the list. Oh, gee, you got more on your list. A couple quick ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can, I can put two of them together. We, uh, we do family pictures every two years, you know, we hire a photographer and, you know, all of the pomp and circumstance of making sure that everybody wears the same matching colors. And like you can see behind us that all those colors are, yeah, you know, Good job. color coordinating. Yeah. Well, I didn't do any of that, Paul. That, I'm, I'm told what to wear. <laughs> You'll be wearing black it. today. Um, <laughs> goes with everything. Um, so that's, that's one of our, one of our ones. And then the other thing is um, spending a lot of time um, in Michigan during the summer, you know, that's kind of evolved over the years. Oh yeah. Um, when we lived in Michigan, of course, it was every weekend we would go. And, and, and I think, I, I think a lot of that is, especially if you have a second place, it's, it's like, it turns into an obligation. You know, it's like, mm. <sighs> gotta go to the lake house, you know, cause well, we just, haven't been was, there in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about that too. Oh gee, that was on my list was the vacation being more than just time off. Like, oh, it's not time off. I got to go to some place that's, you know, big and bold and different or, or to your point, to the same place we always go. One or the yeah. other. Uh, uh, Len, you got a, you got more on your list? Well, I think everybody's pretty much hit uh, the, the, the two remaining ones I had was one. I, we have like every two months we have a game, a game night where we have a bunch of people over and uh, yeah, you got to host and you got to provide the food and the games and the that's so, got to stay. <laughs> yeah, so that's got to stay. But then the other ones are, are, yeah, we have two vacations. We have we usually have our annual uh, Maui trip and then we do one in the summer. Uh, in the, we go to, it's the summer trip to the desert, the annual to the desert, middle, yeah, the, the hottest hottest place you can possibly find in the middle of summer. We tend, we do that uh, every year too. So uh, those have turned into traditions that we just uh, it's almost like we're obligated to do these things now. Baking out at the pool. Yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna think about all these traditions in the second half. But guess what we get to do now, guys? It is time to resume conflict on this show. <laughs> we in 2023 are wiping the slate clean and uh, starting over a new year of our annual trivia challenge. And uh, so the score is zero zero zero. And Doug. Is uh, Doug's going to bring it for those of you new to the show? We have a trivia challenge last all year long. Last year, our friend Eric in Detroit was nice enough to donate uh, a great gift. What was it that he gave you, OG, uh, when you won? It was it was uh, milk oh, bar. Oh, I got a gift certificate to Milk Bar. Oh my yes, god, I'm was, so jealous. Uh, very good. Yeah, you got some good stuff added on to it. That just looked delicious. Can yeah. <laughs> can we get a picture of that for the 201 newsletter, maybe? Yeah, you know what? We'll just throw it in the basement. Yeah, the uh, or in the, the basement. He sent it to me proudly and said, "Look what you're not eating." <laughs> yeah, it was like a cake and Rude. A bunch of truffles. I'm surprised he didn't send it to uh, Len and Paulette as well. Yeah, yeah look I at what been I really got. Sad. Like, just, just all going in his mouth at once. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't eat also. I know, uh, but let's see who's going to eat cake this year. It is week one. Doug, what's our trivia today? Well, first of all, before we do that, Joe, hey, Steve, I need you to get ready with the beep button. You're going to have to be on your game for this one. All right, buddy, you ready? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, hey by there. the way. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Even before you do that, really? Doug? <laughs> really? Well, no. Hold on. I think we should also tell the parents out there as well that uh, this is 
usually a family friendly show, but maybe uh, maybe is if it? you don't want kids to <laughs> if you don't want kids to that ask what all the beeping friendly. is. Yes, it's the if first it, segment of this show already proved that it was a family <laughs> yeah. show. Have you been maybe. listening to the last twenty minutes? <laughs> but yeah. All right. With with that notice. Okay. Here I go, Steve. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And today is the anniversary of Paulette Perhatch's f*** off fund. You know, that's the fund where, to be slightly more polite, you tell your boss to please go take a hike and you never return to work. Hey, Joe. No, I'm just kidding. Today, we'd call that rage quitting your job. But since we're talking about getting all nasty, let's talk about the word f*** and just how many Benjamins that word has made people over the years. From an unspeakable word today, people have made money from f for centuries. In the broadest sense, f for money is the world's oldest profession. And now, popular books like The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f are the New York Times bestsellers. According to the Oxford Dictionary, one of the earliest phrases using the word appears in a Scottish poem written by W. Dunbar in the phrase, Be his fetus he would ow f it. Here's today's trivia kickoff challenge question. What year did that poem appear? I'll be back. See how I even made that rhyme? I'll be back with the answer right after I go wash my mouth out with soap. Did you get them all, Steve? Man, I hope he did. But uh, that's a great way to say hello, 2023, huh? How about that? Wow. Everybody awake now? Congratulations, by the way, Paulette, on the anniversary of uh, that big, big... Uh, I, I, I just... Been... The word has done a lot for my career. It's on my resume. It just cracks me up. I remember when that hit. Uh, I remember just wow, that was a that was a huge thing, and still today is a huge thing. And maybe rage quitting uh, takes its <laughs> takes its its lineage from that. But let's start off uh, with the guy that won last year's challenge. OG, oh, you get to go first. This Scottish poem by W. Dunbar. <laughs> With the phrase, including the word f it, when did that appear? I was thinking the Magna Carta. Um, Is that what they said in the Magna Carta? The Magna Carta. <laughs> I was thinking around that. I was thinking around that time. But, uh, but I might go a little bit, uh, a little bit later than that. Hmm. So then there's Columbus. Were we were we four letter wording it around Columbus at that point? I feel like yes. I'm gonna stick to the Magna Carta. Uh or, or around that, anyways. Um I'm gonna say uh just for S's and G's, how's about uh uh 1397, which I know is uh, a little a little wide berth from the Magna Carta before people send me messages. Who was in the twelve hundreds, dummy? I know. 1397. Yeah, I knew that too. I knew that too about the Magna Carta, obviously. <laughs> um, so, of course, duh. Amazing. Of course. All right, Mr. Penzo, you're in the unenviable position of going second. Yeah, I wish you, I wish you to ask the question, Doug, about the man from Nantucket, because I could have given you the year for that one, but... but. <laughs> Led's favorite um, poem. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty old too. The, the this, and of course it's Scottish. So gosh, that that really day, mate. off. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm sure it's very old. What was yours? What was OG's? Thirteen something. Thirteen. Thirteen and ninety-seven. Thirteen ninety-seven is what you said. Uh, gosh, I don't know. You know what? Could it be older than that? Or, mm, I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll say maybe it's a little bit older than that. Let's say f rah, 1500. 1500 for Mr. Penzo. All right, Paulette. Wouldn't that make it not older than yeah. that? I meant younger. Sorry. I make okay. it possibly younger. Like, <laughs> he doesn't you know, know what he's saying. Just older in the, the just sleep, old, the number speaks for itself. Are, they, are we doing BC or what? older in the younger one? Um, the num the the year that popped in my mind was thirteen hundred. So I'm just going to say that. 
You say which year? 1300? She's taking the under. 1300. Yeah. All right. So she's she's going under. Ma'am, we'd love to tell you which one of these three is right, but we don't play that way. We will be right back. OG kicked it off by going late in the 1300s. Now that uh, Len and Paulette have their guesses, there was no real Chelsea Brendan here. What do you think? Got a shot? I mean, started a dartboard, so we'll see. I think Len's got it. Len, okay. you do have the you do have the you do have the younger years now. If it was created in uh, 1978, was the first time anybody well, said I, it. Let's go You're, back. I don't know. Yeah, like the first, I, the earliest poem we have is from 4,000 years ago. What was that? Oh, and that poem. Oh, there once oh. was a man from Nantucket. <laughs> no, it's, it's there once was a man from Babylon, who I don't know. Uh, Len, you feeling good about 1500? I don't know. I got, Hey, numerically, I think I've got it. Uh, I think I've got the advantage, but who knows? Numerically, oh, well, Paulette, if it was 4,000 years ago, maybe you got the advantage. I never numerically have the advantage on this show, but let's see. What do you mean you never numerically have the advantage? Because you guys are always the ones that are good with the, 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 the numbers and the money, and I'm good with the words. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see if you're good with the numbers this time. Doug, what's our answer, man? Hey there, stackers. I'm money trash talking fuck boy Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. In honor of Paulette's fuck off fund appearing for the first time on today's date back in, back in Paulette. Year, year, please. 2016, 2016. 2016. We're talking about the origins of this most dirty of words. An internet myth appeared in 2014 saying that the word was short for fornicating under consent of the king a myth that historian and language scholar Kate Wiles debunked in a piece called On the Origins of the Word Fuck shortly thereafter. <laughs> it sounds so academic. I know. She doesn't. puts it that way. And it's actually true. This is all true. Yeah. In fact, the website Kotaku went as far back as the 13th century to find names like John Le <laughs> <laughs> A beggar from 1286 and 1267, something like that, and the excellent Simon Fuckabotter, the latter of which related to, unsurprisingly, butter. 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 Fuckabotter. Yeah, I mean. Family show. But, but. Let's get back on track. Today's trivia question was about the origin of this word. In what year did poet W. Dunbar write the phrase, Be his fetus, he won't how fuck it? Which appeared, in the, that, that is authentic Swedish. Gallic pronunciation, by the way, <laughs> which appears in the Oxford Dictionary. The answer, in the year... 1513, which means that 2023's trivia challenge opens with a W from Len. There we go. That's off. We're off to a good start here. Oh, the crowd goes wild. Mr. Penzo leads early. Nice work, Sorry, my Paula. friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what a way to uh, begin the year. I, I, we'd like to apologize for all that. Wow. People, people responsible for that. Have been sacked. Are you bleeping all those? Are there going to be bleeps on all? <laughs> so many bleeps. Yes, so many bleeps, so little time. All right, let's go. <laughs> the second half of today's show is brought to you by Magnify Money. Uh, Len, you know what happens when you go to stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money. Yes, you meet a man from Nantucket. <laughs> you, you may or may not, but you, you will guaranteed find that all those brick and mortar banking products you're using probably not best in class there's lots of online banking happening and you may not be in on it if you're not go to stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money where over 92 percent of all of the online products ranked head to head whether it's savings accounts checking accounts interest rates are going up you don't want to be left behind stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money uh let's and, take and these it works, ideas it works in it works in Nantucket too, right? It does work there. I, I, I think it very might. Okay. Yes. And if it doesn't, you just say <laughs> something. 
Yes. Let's go through these and see if we can either make these either more frugal or more fun is going to be the thing I want to do here in the second half. Take all these ideas we had from the first half and see, is there a way to to upsize these things? Maybe make them even, even better. So let's start off with Paulette. Paulette, for years, you ever think about instead of Ruth's Chris, maybe doing something that would even make it even better, but at the like same AMC. time cost less money like KFC. KFC. You know, and, and that's the interesting thing is like the reason that it is special is because we can only afford to do it once every two or three years, you know? Uh. Um, so sometimes, I don't know. I think that that can be like a really dangerous place to get where it's like, well, it has to, it has to be expensive to be special, like for sure. Yes. But also like the food is amazing. So what if it hard. were like a special place that you went to only on that date? Mm-hmm. Like Ruth's Chris? Only the, yeah. No, I meant like a like a picnic dinner that only happens at, you know, on X day, but it's a picnic instead. But you don't go to the spot Ruth Chris. anytime. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the uh, waiting area at Ruth's Chris. So who's bringing the seafood tower? Ruth's Chris or... Ruth's <laughs> Chris. I mean, it, it could be like... Dance. Yeah. Like, um, Frisco's. Yeah, what could be special about that? Uh, I mean, you can, the good thing is that like with, it's a psychological, you know, uh, trick that you can kind of create positive associations. So if it's like, we go to this silly, oh my God, there was this place called, we never went, but it was called, um, Homer's original smorgasbord in this little town where my best friend lived. And we joked about it all the time, how terrible it was. So it could be just like, a goofball place you go and it's like this is where we go to celebrate and then it would be enjoyable but i mean like it is you can't argue that the food at ruth's chris isn't like amazing so that's part of like the it's part of like we get this the pleasure of this amazing food because like you done good right so yeah yeah but i want to be open to that because i think being more frugal is important well, I think it depends on where you're at, right? I mean, if yeah. it is, is if it is a huge win, I think celebrating is important. I mean, OG, you're mm -hmm. working with people on financial plans all the time. I think celebrating the milestones for some of these big goals, especially, means taking a break and maybe celebrating the, you know, I made it a quarter of the way to this win. The hard part is um, that conversation that you have with yourself that sounds like I deserve dot, dot, dot. Yeah, because that, you know, like Paulette was saying, that can get a little slippery in a hurry, um, especially if you're digging yourself out of issues, you know, oh, I finally paid off a thousand bucks in my credit card. I deserve it to take the family out to Roos Chris this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, now you just put another 500 back on there. So is that really, did you really accomplish anything or did you just create an excuse for yourself to go eat a steak? You know, I mean, um, so, That's so what, I think, yeah, I think it's careful. You got to be careful. Yeah, I think about people like that, uh, you know, celebrate paying off credit card debt by buying a big screen TV or they stick to their budget for three months and they buy a big screen TV. And it's, of course, on credit. Uh, I don't know that we can do anything with go somewhere by yourself and stare like Ron Swanson <laughs> into yeah. the distance. <laughs> pretty frugal. No, gotta, that is cheaper, very uh, cheaper drink. I don't know. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah, we got the scotch is a scotch, so we don't really skimp on that sort of stuff around around these parts. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not Bring sure, Len, the about the Len I'm, Len. I'm not sure about the prime rib one either. I mean, is is, well, is there, there a way is. to um, actually there oh, is? Yeah, prime rib. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can you can 100 percent change that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, prime okay rib. You, you actually can get a cheaper. You're okay making them get a cheaper cut of beef, well, but there, you're okay. not going cheap on the scotch. You're not going to drop down well, to the lauders on the bottom you shelf. Can get, you can get tenderloin instead of instead of prime. You know, you can get you can get choice instead of prime at Costco. You can get you can get a tenderloin slab instead of a big stand, you know, bonus. Len, what I, were you did, thinking? I did that. Well, I did that last last year. There was a shortage of prime. I don't know how successful you were, uh, OG, but uh, last year uh, there was a shortage of prime rib. You only could get the choice, um, mm -hmm. and because it's not, it's called prime rib for a reason. So it was much cheaper. It was, as a matter of fact, it was about, uh, it was more than fifty percent cheaper actually. The the choice, but there was a slight drop off in quality. Still, it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good, 
Um, and it, uh, for the savings of 60%, I'd say it was probably, uh, it was worth it from a money perspective, but you get what you pay for. So there are ways to, to cut corners um, by going with the, a cheaper cut of meat. Remember back in 2006, 2007, when everybody was all about subprime? Well, that was something else. That was a whole different thing. Maybe. Let's talk about holiday decorating. Changing it up for every holiday. Strings I think, of popcorn. What's that, Paul? Strings, Strings of, of popcorn. popcorn. Well, there's like printable stuff that you can like color with kids. And like, I think the crafts where you like make the things are really fun. Because then it's a memory of doing the thing as well. I like that. I like leaning into the decorating like this year. Uh, this year, I, instead of just hurrying to get the Christmas decorations up, I just put on some music. Oh, gee, like, to your point. I just packed my <laughs> and went to Europe. That, that really got me in the mood. <laughs> Grab some. I really I really slummed it this year by taking a river cruise. <laughs> that, that may or may not have happened. That probably did happen. But before that, when I was putting the Christmas decorations up, instead of just throwing them up like we usually do, uh, uh, I put on some music. I just leaned into it. It took a few days. I, I, I grabbed, a, grabbed some scotch and actually literally just had fun with it. Like had a, had a blast decorating the tree. Did the same, taking it down. Like got into the activity of it instead of just the sludge, mm -hmm. you know, of, of another holiday, which Paul, it goes back to your, your point early on. If this is your thing, if the holidays are your thing, I don't want to tell people, Hey, don't decorate for these things. But if you're just doing it because it's what you do, I think that's where the problem comes in. Cause you're at Ross just for less and there's like an Easter egg basket, whatever, whatever, you know, like, um, my mom brought me to like, to like, you know, kitchen towels that say like gather with a pumpkin on it. And it was like really cute. She brought it for Thanksgiving. It was great. But like now I have such limited storage at this house. So I'm like, what do I do? Like donate uh, these towels and like that, you know? So for me, like I'm, I like to get in the spirit and I like to do the things, but in a way that is, I think activity focused and also like maybe crafts and making something that's like a gingerbread. That's really easy. Our gingerbread house. It's really easy to get rid of those when you're done with that. My dad, there's a great way to get rid of those. My my dad uh, used to uh, he had a few Santa Clauses he liked, and that mm -hmm. got that got to be a big deal. And every year, because nobody knows what to get my dad, we we got began giving him Santa Clauses. And finally, this quote tradition of Santa Claus, he's like, "You just got to stop. I just can't. I can't. Just please stop. No more. No more getting me this stuff because it wasn't an intentional thing anymore. Mm -hmm. I think the intention might be the might be the bigger part. What about greeting cards? Oh, D Doug, sorry. No, I, you know, you made me think of something I've been putting some thought into lately. And no, I'm not building up to a lame joke like Len usually does. This is serious and genuine. <laughs> Excellent. <Thanks a lot>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't God, actually even know yeah, why I took my, a swing at I love you, Doug. You, why do you always I, beat I don't know me why up I like did this? That. that was that was I apologize. That was uncalled for. I thought so this, this was the genuine. first sign. There's a lame joke on the way. Was saying there's no lame joke. There's not a lame joke coming. But I'm I had a, this chat with with some of my kids this year. I'm starting to feel like we're we're buying stuff because you feel like you need to buy five things, six things, seven things for every person. And it's, it just doesn't feel right. I would rather that this is what I've asked them to do now for the last several years is get me an experience that we're going to do together. Mm. So like in a couple of weeks, we're going, we got concert tickets and we're going to a concert in Chicago together. That for me is way more valuable than a sweater. I got or, a restaurant you can eat at there. Or something mm. like that. Um, Called a linea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but but it, it sort of plays into what I think is becoming a little bit popular now. Have you guys heard about the four the four gift rule for Christmas? Mm -mm. A lot of parents are starting to get into this. It's called or the, the four gift rule. Something they want, something they need, something to wear, and something to read. And it applies more to kids, but it's... You know, it limits the craziness of how much crap you're buying for people. And and I, I like that idea. And then some people are swapping out the something to wear with some place to go on that same mm -hmm. line of what I asked my kids to do, mm -hmm. which is let, let's create an experience with each other and a memory that we're going to have with each other. Um, and, and it could just be, hey, we're going to go sledding. Or, you know, something that's, you know, it's not like, you know, traveling necessary, necessarily, but I like that whole notion of bringing it down to 
kind of the, the focus of, of what it's about being with each other in the holiday. Well, we'll link to our episode in early December with Tracy McCubbin, the organizational expert, when she was talking about this, because Paulette, she's all about your Amazon list you talked about earlier. Like, mm -hmm. Doug, to your point, if we're going to get people something, get them something that they're going to need and use. I find, I don't know, still at our holiday gift giving stuff, there's there's maybe not a third of it, but a quarter of it that I'm like, yeah, OK, I, I don't um, I don't know what I'm going to even do with this stuff they're like it's so maybe deodorant would you please start using it this is a gift to us <laughs> yes the hey one more one yeah. more alternative to the christmas cards is it you know if it, why not instead of the christmas card how about a phone call how about a you know a lot of these a lot of christmas cards we send to or people and i'm guilty of this uh, that i really have not spoken to in years, you know, several years for sure. And probably, you know what, I should do this myself is, you know, make a phone call and save, save money on the, on the card and, and, and give a phone call. Well, even, even Len, and I love that idea, but it may be not as frugal and maybe a little bit more time intensive, but still, I think fun. The handwritten note has just gone away and just yes. a, just a handwritten note. I, I think at Christmas time or any, at any time, it's just, it always, with me, it makes a huge impact. I, I, I think about whenever somebody sends me a handwritten note, I'm like, God, I should do that because it's so intentional and fun and really not that expensive. Yes. Yeah, and it shows it shows it's more thought and, and we try to do that in the Christmas cards actually is put a little handwritten note in there as well. So but but yes, yeah, something something that shows a little more thought and and uh, and it's cheaper. What about this idea around OG brought up the idea around vacations? We talked about vacations and going to the same place. How do you make that maybe either more meaningful? Well, I, or I more hinted frugal? on mine. I, I, we go in the off season for the summer, our summer trip and the you know we go we go to a, a resort in palm springs or desert mirage in the summer when it's 112 degrees and nobody wants to be there and as a result of that these really high-end uh resorts are practically they're giving away the rooms they're giving the room but you away. said it's amazing and you say we, nobody wants to be there but you still say it, it's it an is amazing, amazing because a because a you've got almost the whole resort to yourself and b i mean the place is fantastic i mean it's still great it's just you just gotta be you know go hang out by the pool while it's you know and and or or be in the bar and, and play cards with your friends or, or something but i mean we have an amazing time every summer even though it's it's really as miserable out there uh and but you just you, you get you, to meet the paramedics really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but you hang by the pool hey the pool's cool and, and and i mean it's you still have a great time and you get fantastic I mean, you just hang out at a, a really high-end resort that you could never otherwise afford. Uh, at least I could. Well, I think, I think like Len, I think, Len, to your point, just thinking more broadly about your vacation instead of just throwing money at it. Um, you know, one of the best vacations we took, this is actually, we went to Joshua Tree National Park. And Len, you told me about a, a trail to take that was off the map. And that's like one of the yes. most memorable things I've done and mm -hmm. cost me nothing it was yeah. so that hike was so amazing that you told well, me about you know, not a hike you you tell them what you tell them what you did you, you went to a you went to an old mining an abandoned mining uh outpost that was where the where these guys were out in the middle of nowhere and they built these they built this the little hut and the hut is still there what, what, how is it over 100 years old right the little it was like camp. stepping back in time yeah it was so hidden i mean we almost walked past it because i thought that the i thought every what was cool about it was len you told me about this hike and then i went and researched it which gave me this you know dopamine hit of about i'm about to experience yeah. this thing and so i build up this excitement about the hike and because of the fact that it's a not a mart trail but a trail that you have to kind of find and it's in the middle of the desert and it was early september when it was 103 degrees out there like we had to get out there early pack enough water like all the planning that went into it and then when we scrambled up the side of this hill, which took forever, and my, I mean, I got a, a, my knee was all bloody by the time we got up to the <laughs> top of this thing. <laughs> we would have walked past the mine if there weren't two people there. We're like, yeah, we're headed to the, to the Eagle, what was it called? The Eagle Mine? Lost Eagle Mine. And they're like, yeah, it's right behind this tree. Yeah. I'm like, really? 
And then we go yeah. behind the tree and all the stuff is still there. Like all the stuff the miners used, it was like they just abandoned it. And isn't it it's a sense this, of accomplishment that you actually found it? I mean, it's not like you said, it's not something that's that's uh, it's really cool. It's a really cool experience. Absolutely. But I think maybe spending a little more time and and, you know, and, and then if you do spend money, that's fine. But it makes the trip more worth it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Makes it a lot more worth it. Oh, gee, you were talking about going to the same place every year and it feels like an obligation. How do you solve that one? Yeah, I don't I don't know that there is a a way out of the obligation other than, um, you know, what we've started to do lately is there's there's a good time to be there. And then there's times where like other people in the family have other stuff going on. So as opposed to you know, just kind of hunkering down and effectively living in another place. Like last year, for example, I went up and golfed with Doug once or twice or whatever. I can't remember, you know, just kind of like break up the every day is the same, you know, at this place, um, you know, this yeah, year, build we'll some builds, up- builds, build like some new traditions you're talking about. Uh, I mean, kicking Doug's butt at golf repeatedly is, I mean, it's hardly a tradition, but it's, I mean, I, if, if he wants to call it a tradition, I can, I mean, I'm okay with that. He probably doesn't, but, um, um, uh, but, but just recognizing that I think that other people have other things going on. Like our oldest is going to be a junior. So he has different school and work requirements now than when he was eight, you know, Caroline can do whatever she wants. She's six, you know, she can spend the whole summer up, up North. Whereas the 17 year old has got other stuff going on. So, yeah. The, that was uh, fun. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, tradition. OG. It's that golf Thanks. simulator. So just just keep the swing. Keep keep swinging. It's all in the hips, Doug. What, what do you shoot, Doug? The hips. What do you shoot when you when you go out there on the course? <laughs> to be more specific, I'm, I'm about a 17 handicap, Lynn. Yeah, I shoot high 60s, low 70s for 18. That's amazing. Yeah, and it gets any warm, if it gets any warmer holes. than that, I don't play. <laughs> oh my god, he's gonna where? Wait, wait. Uh, where's the? Come on, where's the? Found it. <laughs> Found it. You All right, I think like on that. that horrible note, it's a good time to to <laughs> to, to end this thing. I love the idea of thinking through these traditions instead of just blindly spending money. And don't get me wrong, if it's if it if it is Ruth's by the way, who's who owns that place? Does Ruth own it or Chris own it? That's what I I think wonder. Ruth bought Chris's thing. I think it's that's I right. do not no, like that's it. Right. I do not like that name. I think I looked yeah. it up because it annoyed me so much. I was like, why yep. is this why? It's like the old yeah. fifth third bank. Is it fifth bank or third <laughs> bank or the hell? Yeah. Yes. Let's make us say something normal, please. I know, right? Hey, uh, I think that's a good place to end it. Let's find what's happening where all of you guys uh, live. Uh, OG, big plans this weekend, my friend? Nope. No plans. I love it. That is my favorite weekend activity. Sitting around. Nothing. So good. But speaking of plans, uh, Paulette, you've got a big thing coming up. A big thing for writers. Big thing. We have our powerhouse writers group coaching program starting January 24th. And it is four months of setting up a foundation for a profitable freelance writing business. It's for writers who want to add power to their words, their work, and their earning potential. And super excited about the people we already have signed up and excited to meet the people who uh, want to double down and take their freelance writing seriously this year. I, I like the idea of uh, making it profitable because I know a lot of people that uh, that get involved in writing and they're like, you know, I, I, I don't know where this idea of of people in the quote arts thinking that money is evil. Right. Oh, no, no. If I make money, I'm not an artist anymore. No, no, no. no. Shouldn't think that way. Yeah, that's how I fund my, you know, two hours in the morning writing my morning pages and my novel. It's because I earn uh, good money working for businesses, freelance writing and um, and helping people meet their aims. Like it's it's I love I've learned so much from my clients, not you guys, but other ones um, <laughs> and have really just, just enjoyed. Yeah, and I've really enjoyed the people I've gotten to meet again, not you guys, but the, my other clients. Um, and that's all been a really great time. No, um, it's all about getting to those those jobs where you earn more and you are having more fun. 
So I I really loved it. And I love how business is also a creative expression. That was such a surprise to me, but it's been really enjoyable. The ahas that turn on. Uh, Len Penzo. What's going on at LenPenzo.com this coming week? Well, this week, uh, their discussion came up about uh, extended warranties, in particular, in particular, extended warranties for tires. And there seems to be quite a uh, discussion going on about whether that's actually a good deal or not. Uh, quite, quite a controversy. Uh, depends. People feel strongly on both sides. So uh, we look at that and uh, discuss the pros and cons of so if warranties. you feel like I, screaming and yelling about the extended warranties on tires, <laughs> which is all the controversy. Uh, nothing but the best here at LenPenzo.com, <laughs> folks. So, the burning questions. So That's, that, that, is, that is fabulous. But extended warranties in general, you always wonder. I was buying a chainsaw yesterday, and they're like, do you want the extended warranty? Can you always have that? I can be like, like do no, I? I'll be in prison. That's right. Yeah. Right after. No. Yeah. Make the movie first. And then, uh, uh, what the hell was that about? Get it? Cause you're going to murder do. people with it. I do. And that's why I said, no, make the movie first. And I'm like, Jesus, not the movie. Uh, yeah. No, the real thing. Really murdering people. That's funny. Uh, right? <laughs> Here we go. Wait, wait. Three, two, one. Found it again. <laughs> Found both of them. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's. I think. I think that's going to do it as we crash land the plane again on a Friday. Doug, please get us out of here. What should we have learned today? <laughs> oh, gladly, Joe. First, traditions they may actually become even more fun and less expensive if you give them a moment and really lean into them. Second, take it from Lennon OG, locking the door to keep your family out. Drinking some booze alone with a good piece of steak is a fine tradition to start. But the big lesson, thank goodness Steve doesn't charge by the hour. All this beeping Steve's got to add to this podcast after that potty mouth trivia. Holy cow, we're making him work. Hey, Steve, you know, I just had an idea. Maybe you should, like, put a light over the window of your engineer booth, you know, and, like, shine it red when we're over the limit on our time with you like you know like a big red light over the window so we can all see it and you can stand there telling us that we've actually you're gonna make a lot of money if you put a red light over your window i can it's all right we'll work on it later thanks to len penzo for joining us today you can find len at lenpenzo.com slash nantucket thanks also to og for joining us today looking for good financial planning help Head to thestackingbenjamins.com slash OG for his calendar. This show is the property of SB Podcast LLC, copyright 2023, and is created by Joe Saul Seahigh. Our producer is Karen Repine. The show is written by the brilliant Paulette Perhatch with help from me, Joe, and Doc G from the Earn and Invest podcast. Take a deeper dive into all the topics we cover on each episode by checking out our newsletter, The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at the 201. Just go to stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Tina Eichenberg makes the video version of this show. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do, right? F***ing that. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude is our social media coordinator and the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show. Not only should you not take advice from these day-old donuts, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. Welcome to the after show, Paulette. Welcome to the after show. (laughs)
God, I'm sorry. Jeez, your little secret club. It is a secret club, but you were talking about a song. What song were you talking about? We were talking about the diarrhea song that my family used to sing. <laughs> oh, we did. We vacation. called your mom. Oh, my God. And so many people posted them on the basement. And oh, my God, I played it for my mom at Christmas. She died laughing. We were dying. I I, I missed that one. I, I got to go back and look at that because oh I was God. in. Uh, yeah, check it out. People tag me. It was great. Sailing down the Danube. Doug. Oh, sorry, Joe. I was busy sailing down the Danube. Uh, I do want to ask you, let's talk about the fuck off fun anniversary. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but was there a big, was there like a big, I would imagine there'd be some pushback. Like you get some emails on both sides of that thing. Literally one jerk face. Like that's it. It was what was amazing about it was the, how there was so much response and it was so overwhelm, overwhelmingly positive. And I was like, it really was a, a time where I was like, this is going to happen once in my life. And this is like a little roller coaster I get to go on right now. But it was, yeah, people were, it was great. It was really nice. Oh, gee, have you ever sworn in public? Like, like, like at my kids like, or like, like I remember, I remember in fourth grade, I, uh, this kid was, I, I was in this, uh, it was a play and uh, we were messing around with the microphone and I got this kid to say, fuck, 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 at, right in front of the microphone. And I turned it on when he was saying it. And, um, yeah, Mr. Good, our principal who was not good at all, by the way, Mr. Bad, um, came over and like put his armor on me. Kind of like when I wow. got my brother in trouble doing the similar stuff that we've mm. talked about in the past. <clears throat> yeah. But no, you've never. I mean, I swear your mouth washed out time. with soap. Yes. All that's happened. <laughs> like I'm confused as to the question, you know, I, I mean, I got, I don't remember doing it when I was in fourth grade, but, um, um, I try to stay off the public stage while, you know, stay off the microphone and swear that would be career ending for a hot minute. But, um, although I've known it to happen to other people, it doesn't seem to be as career ending now as it was, you know, like 25 years ago, 25 years ago, you said mm-hmm. anything with South San Diego. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Like then it'd be suicide. I was now, watching like, Sports Center the other day, they had an interview with, uh, uh, somebody, and he and he swore they didn't beep it out. Nothing. I think it was it was too live. It was like they didn't have the they didn't have the delay built oh. into it. Mm, and yeah. I know they were just like, oh, there it goes. Here comes the fine. It is so funny though. It's like a collection of sounds that we all respond. It's like if you raise your middle finger, it means something. It's like all this. And if you know any curse words, like one of my favorite curse words that like I kept in my soul from from like Paraguay. Like I still say if I stub my toe or something and I love that I can like say it as loud as I want. Anyone can hear it. No one has any idea what it means. So like in that context, nobody cares, but like on TV in Paraguay, I could be fined or whatever. It's just this really weird hierarchy of, of words. I just think it's a very silly human thing. Len, did you, Len, did you have a potty mouth growing up? Fuck no. (laughs) Get in trouble for the, (laughs) Italian family, I would think. Uh... <laughs> no, uh, 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 me growing up, no, I, 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 not me, no. Sorry. I, did you see the <laughs> halo over Len's head? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the halo appears. Oh, I'm Len Penzo. So you going to tell us the Paraguay word, Paulette? Añara copeguare. And we just got banned. You in say that really loud when you stub your toe. That's a An- sentence. Añaraco, beware. Or you can say añaraco. That's a good one too. That's just a shortened version. And we just got plantains. Banned. 